White Hart Lane. Spurs three points above the relegation places, Everton two. Both clubs well aware their league position was perilous. It's John Watson in the commentary box. Modern stadium history is made here. The upper tier of Tottenham's new north stand is open for the first time, which means that today's sellout crowd of around 36,000 is the biggest at White Hart Lane for over 10 years. And the occasion is marked by the return to the respective sides of two influential figures. Duncan Ferguson is back to lead the Everton attack after missing the last four matches through suspension and injury. And David Ginola resumes his place in the Tottenham midfield after serving a one-match ban. That's one of two changes from the side that won at Crystal Palace. Alan Nielsen is back after illness, so Colin Calderwood and Musa Saeed drop to the bench. And the injured international trio of Anderton, Everson and Ferdinand are scheduled for another reserve match on Monday before challenging for first-team places. Everton have reshuffled following last week's home humiliation by Aston Villa. 18-year-old Irishman Richard Dunn comes into a five-man defence, which is still without the suspended Billich and Tyler. And in midfield, 20-year-old Gavin McCann makes his starting debut. Gareth Farrelly and John Oster are left out. Nick Barnby plays against the club where he started his career. Howard Kendall in his 19th season of football management. Alan Wilkie gets this six-pointer started. There were two Tottenham players in the Everton half, actually, when they kicked off, but uh, no matter, here's Rule Fox. And bear in mind, Everton haven't won at White Hart Lane for 12 and a half years. The last time they did so, the winning goal was scored by Gary Lineker. But that record counts for nothing today, as Spurs get the first free kick. Ginola and Fox over there on the ball. Vegas come forward, so as... Uh, Armstrong there, and the blocked shot. Bertie struck it. It's a corner. It came off uh, Richard Dunn. So, Campbell can stay forward for Tottenham. And so too can Vega. Whirling in the wind from Ginola, and it is quite blustery here at uh, Tottenham today. This is Klinsman. Free kick again to Spurs. Bertie brought down. Ginola. And still Vega is forward. That could have been dangerous. It was Dunn who cleared it. Christian Gross knows that after a win last week against Crystal Palace, Tottenham need to sustain that momentum. Barnby and Ferguson setting up the play here. This is O'Kane to Hutchison. Oh, Madar is unmarked. Oh, what on earth was Spurs doing there? Barnby appeared to be pushed by Campbell in the middle of all that as well. But Madar had no Tottenham defender near him. As uh, Don Hutchison plays the ball in, chose to play a stooping header towards an already falling Barnby. Dane beats Frenchman there. This is an Italian, Bertie. Well, the ball was won by Barnby from behind. Fairly said the referee. This is McCann for Everton. And a good long kick by Walker. Look at this, Armstrong really gets three quarters of the length of the pitch on his uh, clearances, Ian Walker. <laughs> Ferguson. Spurs again, slack in defence. Shouldn't really have allowed him room there, surely. That's forward by O'Kane, and back by Campbell. Now McCann, Ferguson for Everton. To ball. And here's Madar. Oh, trouble here, Barnby's in. Corner. Ramon Vega 
did just enough to stop Nick Barmby. It's Madar who heads it through, and Vega challenging Barmby. And that was short. This is Watson. What a good chance. Didn't get hold of it properly. Twice there, an opportunity has beckoned Everton here. And Dave Watson had the chance when the ball was knocked down from the corner. Ginola for Spurs. Shaking them off in stride. Three ahead of him. Here's Armstrong. Down he goes in a tumble. Nothing given by the referee. And I don't think Chris Armstrong could have expected a penalty there. It was a bit untidy. He was uh, in a tangle with Craig Short. Wilson for Spurs. And still. It's a good run by Clive Wilson, but he didn't quite have the angle to get in the perfect cross. Corner off short. Curled in by Gidala. Campbell's at the back. And he beats the ground in frustration, Sol Campbell feeling perhaps he should have scored it's curled in by Ginola beyond the last defender but in fairness he was challenged Campbell it came off the side of his head that's Ferguson's touch out to ball Madar well forward here number seven offside and somebody kicked the ball away there and uh, the referee shows the yellow card to Mikel Madar who expressed his frustration and two Everton players are now in the book he's still protesting oh and that through ball finds Madar on side Tottenham were dreaming in defence and Madar scores for Everton the Spurs defenders stand and look at each other. And Mikel Madar, within seconds of being cautioned, puts Howard Kendall's team ahead. But where on earth was the Tottenham cover? Goal, 24 ball, minutes gone. 24 minutes and the through ball seven, played by ball. Nick Barmby found Tottenham square, but yards behind Madar, who slides it past Walker as he comes out. And in this match of such critical importance to both teams Everton who are coming from behind Tottenham in that relegation scramble take the lead and now Nielsen well Ginola is getting plenty of the ball it's a question of what he can achieve in the Everton half he's been taken out there by John O'Kane and here comes another yellow card for Everton or is it? No, it's for Ginola. It's for Ginola for presumably acting. Well, we had a situation last week at Crystal Palace where the referee booked Armstrong in similar circumstances. Ginola has been booked by Alan Wilkie for presumably diving there following the tackle by John O'Kane. And somewhere in there you'll see the great Bill Nicholson, the club president, who on his first day as manager here in 1958 saw Spurs beat Everton 10-4. This is O'Kane. And that's a dangerous ball into Madar, except that he's offside, and Spurs can quickly take the free kick and convert defence into attack with Bertie. Touched by Klinsman to Ginola. Fox. Carr. Armstrong, no. Fox will try again for Tottenham. But they're running into defenders at the moment, Spurs. Here's Ginola. And still Ginola. It was whizzing past the post. And not very far past, I would think, from this angle. Thomas Mura may have had it covered, but it was a spectacular individual effort from Ginola. My word, it could have crept in. He hasn't had perhaps the best of halves in terms of end product, but uh, that wasn't far away. And neither is the half-time whistle. And a team talk that will test Christian Gross. 
Here's Campbell. Half time and a decidedly different situation to last week here. Everton showing resilience, pinching a goal on the break, defending well, and Spurs unable to open them up and showing signs of anxiety themselves. Half time, it's Tottenham nil, Everton won. Well, during the half time interval, the crowd here at Tottenham were able to watch the Grand National on the two giant jumbo screens, and there was something of a connection because the horse that won is partly owned by a Tottenham season ticket holder and former youth team player Ricky George. But uh, Spurs have got a few fences to clear here if they're going to pull this match round. Everton now playing from the right, and this is Vega for Tottenham. And there goes Armstrong, he's onside, he's got Jurgen Klinsmann in the centre, and Rule Fox is moving up. This is Nielsen to Armstrong. And still... Oh, Klinsman was waiting to tuck that in if it had come that far. And Madar stretching Campbell, looking for the free kick. But he's been something of a thorn in Tottenham's side. It's uh, pretty impossible to overestimate the importance of uh, where the points are going today. And you can... Uh, Bet your life that Everton are going to hang on to this lead with as much tenacity as they can muster. And they showed plenty of that in the first half. This is Ball. And now it's Fox. Armstrong in the centre. So is Jurgen Klinsmann. Oh, and a touch there by Nielsen to Klinsmann who couldn't get his shot in. Everton defenders falling in front of him, and now Vega has fallen and let Ferguson away, and Madar's coming into the centre now, and there's Madar, and there's Ferguson, who makes a real mess of that. The chance that should really have gone in, and it would have been 2-0 Everton. There was nothing wrong with the approach play. Vega slipped, Madar got away, combined with Ferguson, who plays the ball in here, is then in the right place to get Madar's return, Beautifully laid off, and dear me, what a wayward effort. Bertie to Fox. And again, Rule Fox. He's got Klinsman in the centre along with uh, Ginola. That came off Dunn, but only as far as Carr. And still they line up on the far side of the area for Tottenham. Klinsman's there. Just gets underneath it. Referee telling one or two players to calm down as Klinsman's header goes over. Had a long chat with Michael Ball, who he booked in the first half. This is uh, a difficult situation now for Spurs, and one that Everton are coping with at the moment quite comfortably. Ginola got uh, Klinsman to his right and Fox, still Ginola, and a corner it is. Well, Spurs have had plenty of corners, a string of free kicks, but they haven't yet made good use of any of them. The backing from the New upper tier at that end of the ground could be invaluable now. Ginola plays it back to Bertie. On to Fox. And still rule Fox. Oh, it's a brave header that. But he's not away yet. Here's Ginola. John O'Kane, who dived ahead that clear initially. Back in by Vega. Here comes Klinsman. And Mura, a magnificent throw. Look at this, it's Barnley. 
Wilson tried to cover Nick Barnby for Everton and Duncan Ferguson tries to reach the loose ball and two Tottenham players are flat out but it could have been much worse for Spurs that was a magnificent piece of distribution by the Norwegian goalkeeper Thomas Muir and the man who latched onto it with equal intelligence was Nick Barnby it happens here Muir hurls the ball out from his 18-yard area more than half the length of the pitch Barnby got away from Wilson but Walker shut him down but Spurs are more concerned here about uh, the condition of Clive Wilson he came across here to try to uh, close Barnby down and as Barnby went past him there was nothing wrong with what Barnby did it was the awkward way in which Clive Wilson fell Substitution for Spurs replacement. Well, not much is going right here for Christian Gross. Well, Klinsman picks out Carr on this side and then goes into the penalty area to join the others. Here's Klinsman! Oh! No! Just past the post. It looked from one side of the ground as though it was in. A startling header by Jurgen Klinsmann, having started the move out to Carr. He was on the other end of it. It's got power, that has, but look at it, it just shaves the post. Just wonder what Christian Gross might decide to do if Tottenham don't find a way back in to things here. He's got uh, Saib on the bench. But for the moment, it's Hutchison with a long ball, beautifully delivered towards Duncan Ferguson. Who made a better fist of that than he did have a much easier chance earlier. Here's Ginola. Oh, Nielsen in a good position here for Tottenham. Great block, Klinsmann's in the crowd. Comes out to Fox. Blocked by Dunn, indirect free kick for obstruction. Well, an awful lot went on in there. But there's no doubt about the outcome. That is a case of obstruction on the line. It's indirect, otherwise it would have been uh, a penalty had it been a different sort of offence. But you don't need to tell Christian Gross how vital three points dropped here might be in terms of Tottenham's chances of staying out of the bottom three. But by the same token, Howard Kendall knows but if Everton hold on here, it gives them real hope. That's uh, Rule Fox. And there, there goes Saeed, it's his first touch. Klinsman! Oh, that struck short, I think. It was on its way in, surely, or it certainly would have brought a save from Mura from Jürgen Klinsman. Now it's Duncan Ferguson at the other end with Madar making a run through for Everton, cut out, importantly, by Vega. Well, there's no telling what might happen now in what was billed quite rightly as a relegation battle at White Hart Lane between two clubs who a few years ago were part of the Big Five. At the moment, they're part of the bottom five. Hutchison will take the free kick for Everton. It's over towards John O'Kane. But he can't turn Sol Campbell, who's played in that left-back position before, of course, earlier in his career. Here's Madar. And it's Ginola. And the two forward players go either side of him, Armstrong and Klinsman. He's found Fox with a better ball. It's Rule Fox for Spurs. Great blocking again. Richard Dunn, the 18-year-old. Heroic, really, the way Everton have closed down the top and forwards. Vega and Campbell. There's Colin Calderwood. Vega! Feels for handball. Referee is unmoved. Oh, this is tense stuff. Nielsen for Tottenham. There's nobody wide left. He's got to come this way to save. Drifted in. Good ball in. Header on. That was Armstrong. Armstrong got it. It was headed on by Vega. And 
Spurs have equalised. And Saeed made the goal after just coming on. A piece of invention here. And Tottenham are level with 17 minutes to go. Armstrong got on the end of it. But it was Saeed who drifted that lovely ball in. Watch Ramon Vega. He heads it back across the goal. In comes Chris Armstrong. And with the header, he makes it 1-1. Equaliser for Spurs after 73 minutes, 25 seconds. Kane and Hutchison now combine. In the centre, Duncan Ferguson, Nick Barnby and John Spencer all kept waiting. Came off Fox to McCann. Good turn there by Ball. And here he is again. Good effort by Ball. What a good save too. Michael Ball. The 18-year-old had the final say there. It may be the final say in the match. What a good effort it was too from the left wing back. Clinton and Armstrong are up ahead. This could be the last throw. Good challenge by... McCann and finally the whistle goes defeat today for either team would have been unthinkable Howard Kendall's team led for a long time and made it very hard for Spurs who eventually with Christian Gross making a substitution drew level with Chris Armstrong's goal and so a result that perhaps at first sight doesn't help either club that much they'll be going back to the dressing room now to look closely at the other scores but on the day it was a real nail-biter and Saeed's introduction rescued Tottenham and gave us a final score of Spurs 1, Everton 1. Are you disappointed you didn't win this one? No, I think that the draw was a, was a fair result. We had opportunities to score, but also uh, Tottenham put a lot of quality uh, crosses into our area. We had to deal with that and we did it very well for most of the game, but Tom Stronger on the end of one. Ferguson had a glorious chance that I think probably at his best he would have scored. Well, Duncan's not played for about six weeks uh, now, his suspension, then he was injured last week. He's gone out there today and he's given his all for the 90 minutes. He's absolutely shattered now. Um, it would be very difficult to criticise him for missing an opportunity. I think he was outstanding today. We would have set up for a point. Everyone was saying we had to win today. But, you know, it's, 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 it's a tough place, especially with the players they have got. It's a tough place to come, you know, for any team. And, uh, you know, because they've, they've picked up recently, like uh, hopefully, you know, we can now. And hopefully this is a stepping stone for us.